What we lack right now is a comprehensive understanding of how variable the cancers are one to the next and what common features there are one uh, between the cancers so that we can begin to focus on those common features uh, as possible sites of therapeutic attack or as possible markers that would allow us to predict how a cancer is going to behave clinically. TCGA is really important because uh, up until now we'd be, been studying cancer as snippets, really little pieces bit by bit. And I always like to use the analogy of the elephant with the blind men feeling the elephant. And uh, one man, one blind man feels the one of the legs and thinks that an elephant looks like a tree. Another one grabs the trunk and thinks that it looks like a snake. And that's really how we'd been approaching cancer research and what TCGA is really um, set up to do is to really get a complete picture of the whole elephant to investigate all parts. And so we have to use all these different measurements that they're doing in high-tech laboratories with lots of new technology and try to combine them in order to get a picture, an image, a description of what's happening in this tumor, what's happening in the cells. The point of, of what we're trying to do is, is really define the whole spectrum of mutations because there's you know, every reason to believe that knowing about the entire spectrum of mutations within a cancer will point you to a pathway you might never have thought about before. I think the other way to think about that is we're trying to make a long list of all the things that goes into making a cancer. It's almost like the parts list for a car. Mechanics needs it, but then the next step is the mechanic have to put all these bits and pieces together to make a car. And we're trying to reverse engineer and figure out what makes a cancer. Uh, tumors evolve in, a, in sort of a random process, and if we, if we only looked at a handful of tumors, we wouldn't be able to tell the things that were randomly happening from things that are, that are responsible for the underlying process of, of tumor evolution. We would not have been able to find out that this mutation in IDH1 occurred in exactly the same tumors as our epigenetic profile if these had been done in separate studies. Actually, the IDH1 mutation had been identified in a separate study and they'd not identified the epigenetic profile that goes with it because they didn't have this comprehensive approach on exactly the same samples. A lot of studies might look at you know 50 or 100 or even a few hundred tumors using a sim one assay and for, for ATLAS um, that's not good enough. We need to know how changes in a gene expression relate to uh, changes in the DNA sequence and, and whether or not those changes in the DNA sequence are at the level of single base mutations that cause little changes in proteins or at the level of uh, duplications or deletion events. And so all those coordinated analyses are really what makes TCGA special. What the Cancer Genome Atlas will allow us to drive forward is taking a common set of samples and understanding them completely. Mm -hmm.